to what is going on scenario talk 23 i'm back with another video before we get into the video youtube i need you to hit the like comment and subscribe button turn on that post notification bell while you at it oh today we got when a gang leader confronted tyson let's get straight into it i'm gonna this is gonna be a fight tyson and you know it you hit me i'm gonna kill you Welcome back to the Big Fight Recap here on the LTV Classic. That's crazy, man. Tyson. On today's video, we revisit the infamous two-fight saga between Mike Tyson and Mitch Blood Green. A genuine beef that 10 rounds of boxing couldn't squash as the two would face off one more time on the street, this time in a much shorter affair with a decisive victory. Oh, Lord. Let's get right to it. After Tyson's 10 round decision to James Quick Tillis in 1986, the invincibility aura from Kid Dynamite took a slight knock as the two heavyweights battled out a much closer fight than the boxing fans and bookmakers expected. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got, you know, I feel relieved, and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. It was Tyson's first time going the distance, as he had finished his previous 19 opponents all inside the opening two or three rounds. That gave some of the other heavyweight contenders an incentive to catch this teenage dynamo early, halt the hype train, and earn the highest possible payday outside of a championship fight. Tyson said, well, give me a fight, I want Mike Tyson. Point blank. Michelle Tyson, he's a I'm gonna knock him out. Mitch Blood Green was one of the first fighters to utilize the new age of digital camcorders to get his message out there to boxing fans. Now I'm gonna show you something. Feast your eyes. Order real There was no social media in those days, but local news stations and televised sports networks, such as HBO, would air the clips during a broadcast to gauge the fans' reaction. The power? I ain't no joke. It's probably due oh, to audio compression up. over time, but I can honestly say I have difficulty understanding what Mitch Green is saying. Two clear things were the muscle flexing and homophobic slurs, and bizarrely enough, as far as my research suggests, this was enough to land him a shot at the hottest prospect in world boxing. Growing up on the tough streets of Detroit, Mitch Green was a prominent player in 1970s New York gang warfare. By the age of 17, he had witnessed his father lose his life in a bizarre western-style quick-draw shootout, not long before being shot twice himself, fortunately escaping with non-fatal injuries. Green tried to escape gang life by joining the UBA boxing gym in New York, but by this time his ties to the street were too pronounced, as he was now hailed the king of New York street gangs by the NYPD for his role as gang leader in the Deadly Bloods crew. Things slowly started to change for Mitch as his reputation as a gang leader was exceeded by that of a talented amateur boxer, oh, the muscular six foot five big man that was racking up copious tournament success, including several New York Golden Gloves. From the Bronx, New York, undefeated in five professional bouts with one draw. Green took to the professional ring in 1980 and quickly started racking up wins over journeymen and French contenders such as Jumbo Cummings. Champion and winning Trevor Burbank became the first man to beat Green in 1985 where Mitch made a good account of himself, only losing by majority decision. Both Tyson and Green were on the fringe of a world title shot, so regardless of the antics, the two were on a likely collision course. The trash talk from Green just helped build more interest in the fight, which in turn certainly struck a chord with Tyson, who openly admitted to hating that ugly mother effort. Mike Tyson probably didn't fight his head at all. No socks, he says it makes him feel like a warrior. Makes him feel like a gladiator. Do this brilliant trick for just 15 minutes per day to get incredible abs without working out or die. Tyson met Green for the first time in May 1986 at Madison Square Garden. It was Tyson's first match at a prestigious boxing venue and also the first to be covered by a large television network. Yet, the occasion didn't change the traditional no robe, no socks attire. He was all business and had a personal vendetta to settle with the now not so confident looking Mitch Blood Green. And was so much a factor in the last fight that we showed you here on HBO that he didn't double up. He just was a little bit lazy, especially in the later rounds. So we'll see what he does about that against Mitch Green. Always aggressive, right in front of his man. That was his hand movement. Ooh, he's 
There's the left kick I was talking about. He did draw a warning from Luis Rivera, the referee. Come on, hold it. Green's in trouble. Right. Not Everyone has a plan until they get their mouth guard punched out of the ring in the first round. While Green had all the physical advantages, Tyson's supreme boxing skills and speed negated the gap in size and weight, backing up Green from the opening bell, slipping and countering, forcing the much bigger man into survival mode for the word to go. Big right hand against Tillis, and what a shot! That is an awesome shot! Tyson punched out Green's mouth guard again in the third, where after he started mocking his opponent for having a wide, gulping mouth. Stalking him across the ring, landing fierce single power punches. Oh, and they think they punch. Another big left hook. Hey, Tyson, there, get up a cup. He has to take a standing venture. Another couple body shots. Well, he's smiling. Tyson is smiling. You see, Green has those fast hands. The fight became so routine by the closing stages, the crowd knew they were witnessing a foregone conclusion. Tyson himself appeared to have his mind elsewhere as he bizarrely kissed his trainer, Kevin Rooney, while he was trying to deliver him intricate strategies and details regarding the fight. <laughs> Kevin Rooney is in there and just jabbering Tyson away a hundred miles shoot, an hour. Mike Tyson leaned over and just kissed him. Tyson closed the show, trying to score the knockout, but Green's disinclination to engage allowed him to grab and clinch his way to safety, resulting in him losing nine out of ten of the rounds on every judge of sport. Side, that I was going to win this fight so easy because of his style. He's a gang tough opponent and he took some fairly decent shots. But as you know, I won comfortably and I didn't try for the knockout and I used a great deal of discipline in there, not knocking him out. Tyson claimed he carried Green the 10 round distance on purpose to punish him for as long as possible. And whether it was true or not, Green's personal not pride was hurt and he was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sliver of respect amongst his peers. Green retired from boxing after the Tyson loss and returned to the street to earn a living from selling drugs. He always planned to one day get Tyson back in the ring, but as his years of inactivity ensued, Tyson progressed to one of the most dominant heavyweight champions of all time, undefeated and undisputed. The days of fighting lingering contenders such as Mitch Green were over. It wasn't until a couple of years after their fight that the two would meet again, this time in Green's element, the street. In the early hours of August 23rd, 1988, Mitch Green got wind that Tyson was shopping at a local clothing store close by to where he ran things on the street. Tyson had traveled a fair distance to pick up a luxury leather jacket handmade by one of his friends over at Dapper Dan's. As Tyson was chilling in the store with his entourage, Mitch Green burst through the door on his own, high on angel dust, demanding Tyson either give him a rematch or empty his pockets right there on the spot. What? Tyson, of course, no stranger to altercations on the street, dragged Mitch Green outside and pummeled him to the ground multiple times. Spectators said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. In fact, it was no longer than 15 to 20 seconds, but that's more than long enough for the heavyweight champion to inflict severe damage. There is no footage of the fight, regardless of the clickbait you see on YouTube, but there were many accounts of what happened that all aligned, all except Green's account, where he claimed Tyson sucker-punched him and ran. Who threw the first punch here? He did. He sucker punched me. Because he's with his friends. You know, and um, when he hit me, and I said, I couldn't get a chance to get to him like I want to, because everybody was like, pulling me, you know, holding me, like, so he could get away from me. And so he get away. And he, like, he, was, he ran yeah, from me. Green was certain the Tyson scuffle, which became mainstream news around the world, would add enough public intrigue to get his rival back in the ring. But Mitch had already burnt his bridges among the promoters in the sport, with his violent threats to Don King in the past already shadow banning him from ever earning any serious money in the ring again. After Green's failed attempts to get the rematch with Tyson, he filed a civil lawsuit for $20 million due to the injuries he suffered during their fight. The former gang leader came away with one small W to coincide with a long list of L's, winning the case and being awarded $45,000, close to what his purse was during their professional fight in 1986. Yeah, I remember seeing Mitch Green's eye after that. It was like, he broke, broke his socket. He broke the eye socket. socket. Yeah. He broke his eye socket. Yeah. Shit. Eye socket. You gotta hit really hard to do some like that, right? Green returned to the ring seven years later, but at that point he was a shell of his former self and was beaten by journeymen with losing records until he hung them up for good in 2005. As of 2022, Green is still a large as life character, but now employs his energy into his love of Christianity. He still has a gripe with Tyson, but I think it's fair to say the two have now moved on, and whenever the topic is brought up today, they both make light of their infamous 30-year feud. 
That didn't work. The boy's scared of death. That's the the street fight. The boy's scared of death. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't y'all have a street fight, bitch? I don't know. For the ring, for the street. Thinking the man would do somebody, he wouldn't do nothing. Oh, man, he freaked me out. Did you know that actually Tyson and Sal are good friends and he comes to the show? He did hook up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was Tyson? You see that? You know what you do. Oh, what the hell? The nigga was just sitting in the crowd? Hell no. Man, he wasn't messing with no Tyson, bro. Nobody was messing with Tyson for real until his trainer. The first trainer that Tyson had, bro, if he would have never died, bro, Tyson would have been and never lost. Come on, bro. He made Tyson into a different man, bro. But YouTube, that's going to be it for this video. If you're rocking with the channel, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. Catch me on the next one.